Hi, this is Kimball Bullington, and I'm um, in continuing the uh, measurement phase uh, overview. So this is part two. We talked about accuracy and precision, and then we talked about precision versus resolution. Whatever we uh, develop as a measurement system, obviously the benefits of uh, getting the data need to outweigh the cost of getting it. And um, if we can't answer that second question there, what does this measure do for the project, then we probably shouldn't have the measurement included. Uh, there are a number of different tools in Six Sigma that we use that are related to measures. We've already talked about process maps, swim lanes, and value stream maps. We talked about them in the defined phase. And in fact, we're going to talk about uh, some form of those, at least process maps, in every single phase. Uh, I, I sometimes refer to it as uh, I say it's one tool that rules them all. Um, it, it's um, what the benefit in measure is that you have identified all these processes, and now you can look at each individual process and say, are there measures for that process in place, or are there measures for a group of processes, or even at the end, and so on. So it's a it's a way to sort of remind us that oh. I'm not measuring this, maybe I should. Uh, SIPOC is really just a, in, in some ways a, sort of a high level uh, process map, um, uh, suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs, uh, customers, and a um, little bit different form, but it, it um, if we look at the inputs and the outputs, then we can look at do we have measures for those. Uh, cause and effect diagram, again, uh, that lets us see measures in the context of an entire system. Uh, if the improvement we identified in the, um, or, or sorry, the problem we identified in the defined stage is a risk issue, then uh, failure modes and effects analysis is a way to give us a measure, uh, a relative measure of different risks that we're facing with the risk priority numbers that we calculate. Control charts and capability analysis go together. Control chart is one way to tell us, um, is our system stable? We can have control chart of a process, uh, an, a, a, an operations process, or we can have a uh, control chart of the process of measurement. Either way, we want to know, is it stable? And then, is it capable? And capable um, means that the variation that's inherited in the process is acceptably within the limits of um, uh, tolerances of the process. So we can measure at different stages. We've already sort of referred to this. We can look at the output stage. We can look at parts of the process. We can look at input stage. So for instance, if I'm uh, uh, looking at my health and trying to achieve good health, um, then um, the output stage, one of the, one of the uh, measures might be weight. Um, and, um, and I can just say I want to be, I want to weigh less, but if I'm not doing something uh, to achieve that, then that probably won't happen. And in the case of health and weight, um, there's, a, there's a, a process of exercise that probably needs to happen. I can measure that. I can measure uh, how many reps that I do, how many miles I travel on my bicycle in the amount of time, and so I can sort of measure intensity of the exercise. Um, and then on the input stage, well, calories in, and so uh, I can measure the types of food that I eat. Uh, I I'm using um, an app called Noom, and N O O M, and um, it uh, sort of preaches the gospel of, of, of low calorie density. So uh, I, can, I can eat a lot actually as long as the food that I eat is low in calories uh, uh, per volume. And so I can, I can eat anything I want, but I'm just sort of have to balance that out against my calorie budget. So inputs, um, you know, calories in, uh, parts of the process, exercise that I do, and outputs uh, the weight that I measure. Um, you could think about this for your career. I'm not going to take time to do this, but you could measure an output, which could be um, 
some uh, level that you achieve at, at a certain time. You can think of processes uh, in terms of uh, well, ing words, things that you will do, activities that you will do. And so uh, studying, working, developing, learning, those are all uh, processes that might lead to successful output of um, in your career. And then the inputs, I think primarily of of knowledge information uh, would be the inputs um, in this process. Um, types of data, variable data versus attribute data. So variable data, any physical uh, characteristic, I should have said, um, uh, can be measured with variable data. Variable data continuously varies. I, I have no idea how much I really weigh. If you get um, enough uh, resolution. Right now, I'm measured on a scale as 0.2. Um, the resolution is 0.2, so 0.2 pounds. So um, where I am between 199 and 199.2, I have no idea, but I could be anywhere in there. Uh, measure any physical characteristic, height, weight, circumference, uh, relative humidity, barometric pressure, um, uh, decibels, um, Richter scale, a number on the Richter scale. Um, uh, one of my favorites uh, in the, my last job was BRICS, B-R-I-X. It's a measure of sugar content. Durometer is a measure of hardness. Uh, viscosity, a measure of slipperiness. Um, and we have attribute data, good, bad, present, absent, uh, defective, not defective, pass, fail, so on. It's digital. Um, on and off. Um, we can look at categories of measures and my three favorite categories are cost, quality, and time. And there's a number of different ways we can measure cost and quality and time. Um, uh, some more interesting and really newer measures might be measures of social capital. So if you're a not-for-profit or if you're a for-profit organization who has a mission to be socially responsible, like, like Ben and Jerry's, for instance, then um, you might look at the hours served. You might look at tons of, of carbon emitted. Uh, people served, meals delivered, if you're in wheel, uh, meals on wheels, and meals delivered, or if you're like some halfway house, people served. Um, these are relatively new. I say that, uh, I would say we've been measuring social capital for 30 or 40 years, which to you may sound like uh, an old measure, but we're still developing them uh, and still finding out what works and doesn't work. Uh, you can look at Six Sigma statistics, like Sigma level, cost of poor quality, defects per million opportunities, first pass yield. Um, you can look at process capability and measure stability and, uh, and capability. And so there's um, a number of different actual measures of capability, CPK, CP, um, CPR, um, believe it or not. Um, last topic, operational definitions. An operational definition is one you can do business with. It's a definition that is clear and measurable so that others may use it with repeatable results. So here's a few questions I would throw at you. What does clean mean? What if you need clean? How do you measure it? Uh, what does good quality mean? What does good value mean? So uh, in my last, uh, last company I worked for, uh, we asked our suppliers of tubing to give us clean tubing. The reason for that was that if if um, there was um, sometimes you'd end up with draw lubricants on the tubing, they were very hard to get off. Um, so um, and, and when they went into our uh, vacuum furnace for brazing, um, that stuff would cook off, and then it would essentially smoke up the um, filters and clog the filters. If you clog the filters. Um, and ran with clogged filters, then the furnace would overheat. You would burn up hot zone. That's a $30,000 ticket. So we asked our supplier to give us clean tubes. They said, what do you mean by that? And we said, well, we explained the, the need. And they said, well, then are you looking for semiconductor clean? Because we supply tubing to the semiconductor industry. And we said, no, because um, we didn't need them to be that clean. Uh, and that was expensive. 
Um, so we came up with an operational definition that was based on standards and a process. A process we would wipe um, um, a cotton swab on the inside of a tube. Uh, the cotton swab was soaked in acetone. And then we would compare how dingy it looked to a set of standards. And if it was less than our cutoff standard, then, um, then it was OK to use. We gave a set of standards to our supplier. We kept a set of standards. And, um, and we thought that was brilliant. And it actually was a good idea. But what we found out later is that we had to to more clearly document that swabbing process. Because unless we both swab the same way, we would come up with different results. So very important concept. Uh, quite often, we'll say these words, clean, good quality, good value. We haven't defined them. And so we cannot measure them until we have. Walter Schuhart invented statistical process control, uh, control charts. He invented. Um, Plan, do, study, act cycle, which is the foundation for continuous improvement. And he said that operational definitions were of greater importance than control charts. That's saying something. So our deliverables from the measure phase, a plan for collecting data, uh, specifying the type of data needed and techniques for collecting the data, the tools that we're going to use, uh, operational definitions for important measures that may not be clear and that people might not uh, uh, agree on previously and sufficient data set for the problem analysis. Next up is analyze.